we have completed uh, four sessions up to now. So, at the last session uh, there is the fourth session we, uh, we started the chapter 5 that is enterprise resource planning systems. So, ERP, so it is a very good uh, topic and also that the whole chapter that the chapter 5 is covered with that content. So, uh, as I said you earlier, so there have been many questions coming from this chapter 5 is so the whole chapter is uh, considered with uh, ERP system planning and also implementation there are so many content available there. So, we will talk about uh, that. So, uh, with the previous session uh, you may have uh, learned from me about what is ERP and uh, ERP uh, also learn and also about uh, some of the question we discuss. So, uh, the component of ERP we talk about finance, controlling and management accounting treasury management, inventory warehouse management, human resource management, sales and distribution, procurement material management, mass data management. So, on that we talk about uh, kind of customer relationship management, there are so many components in the ERP. So, we talk about that part uh, in the previous session. So, today uh, uh, from today that we are going to start with new uh, start with the continue the same thing and uh, I would like to play a video. So, what is ERP software? ERP stands for enterprise resource planning an industry standard term that wait a minute let us not go there. ERP at its essence is a tool for managing information. Ok, so what is managing information all about? Here is a definition we like. Information management is the organized collection, storage and use of information for the benefit of an enterprise. So, how do you organize information in your company? I bet you have a customer database or CRM and something managing your orders or warehouse, an accounting system and then you are probably filling gaps in your information pipeline with spreadsheets and manual processes. But none of these talk to each other, they do not share data. It is what people call islands of information which impacts efficiency and let us face it efficiency is connected to time and money. So, here is where an ERP system helps you. The ERP centralizes all the information in your organization and by doing this you are able to streamline the flow of information. All your business processes become connected end to end. And now other things become easier you have a single view of your customer so you can provide better service. Your team works more efficiently because they have the information they need when they need it. And when you want to analyze your information since it is all in the same place you can report on it any way you want. So, this is what your ERP does for you. In today's terms we decided to stick another word at the front modern ERP because centralizing and managing your information seamlessly is just the beginning. Modern ERP allows you to do so much more like connect to your customers better through a portal, link to modern communication tools like Exchange 365 for your email or Power BI for business intelligence. Modern ERP can speak the same language as your supplier's systems things like EDI. Modern ERP is flexible, mobile, cloud secure and much more. Here at Arcus we have been working with ERP for over 25 years. So, what is ERP software? Ok, uh, from that video I think you get a very good idea and uh, the previous content which you have talked about with the about ERP has been revised now with this video I think. So, uh, so, let us go with the uh, other slides. Strategic enterprise management system. What is this strategic enterprise management system is? This is also ERP. It is an ERP for making high level strategic decision. 
the ERP that we talk about in order to uh, make uh, strategy decision that system is also used. So, this strategic enterprise management system SCMS also is an ERP. So, it is a kind of a ERP right. So, uh, sometimes they ask in the question paper like this. So, you can answer directly. So, it is an ERP. So, enterprise is uh, strategic enterprise management system is an ERP. SEMS uh, CMS focus primarily on strategic management. So, this is build up this is ER, this ERP is build up for what purpose? That is for strategic management. They are taking strategic decision. Strategic decisions are taken that is to manage for strategic management. An extension of the balance co card. So, in the next slide that I will be talking about uh, what is balance co card is it is an extension. So, uh, if, uh, if it is a in the question paper sometimes they will be asking uh, what is the extension of balance co card approach. So, what should be the answer that is strategic enterprise management system. So, it is an extension of the balance co card definitely this kind of a keyword uh, will be uh, considered for uh, making questions. Normally, when the question uh, preparing people when they are preparing preparing the questions they are mostly focusing on the, uh, the keywords. So, in here uh, uh, we can identify this an extension of the balance co card approach. So, CMS is an extension. In addition, balance co card has uh, 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 four component. So, other than that, they, uh, it's an uh, extension. It means it's an addition, right? So, about the balance co card, we will be talking here. So, before that, we learn about what is strategic enterprise management in SAP. Uh, the SAP. Uh, the SAP is an ERP. So, in SAP uh, software, uh, there is also uh, SEM uh, component that is strategic enterprise management is there. It is an ex example of ERP. So, SAP also having SAP strategic enterprise management. The SAP strategic enterprise management have five component. Definitely, these things, uh, these keyword like five component of strategic enterprise management. So, what are the five component? Uh, if they ask in the question paper, what are the five component of strategic uh, enterprise management? Sometimes they will be giving these uh, answers as one answer and also some other answers will be mix up, mix up and uh, uh, give to the uh, question paper as the answers. So, uh, we will talk about uh, business planning and simulation. What it does? It is planning the business and also simulated that. These components allow managers to carry out simulations as an example looking at capacity requirement for different strategies. So, uh, managers are uh, in, in uh, let us say in the uh, manufacturing environment. The factory manager has to plan its uh, business. What is the business that they are doing is to uh, selling some product to the market. Let us say uh, if it is a uh, soft manufacturing company. So, they are planning the production, they are planning the capacity. So, the managers who are involved in this uh, factory they will be planning they will be planning what are the raw material, what should be the capacity uh, let us say uh, this uh, this month as per the uh, uh, as per the customer orders. So, for this month we have to uh, produce uh, 10,000 of products, but in the next month the target is 15,000. So, we have to accommodate that target in order to accommodate that target what we have to do is we have to increase our capacity 
we have to unleash our capacity and then outsource the capacity if we cannot produce that uh, certain number of uh, requirement uh, of the organization. So, managers who are involved in this uh, process, they will be planning that is what it is explained here and corporate performance monitor KPI, it is focusing on KPI, KPI means key performance indicators. So, in the organization there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, indicators to achieve, it means sometimes uh, after 5 years time, after 1 years time. Uh, so, the KPI, what the, the KPI given to the uh, the employees to achieve certain number of products, certain number of sales. So, sales people what they do is, they uh, do uh, so many activities and uh, uh, try to achieve their sales target. Once they have achieved their sales target, then the sales people uh, achieve it, then the factory people has to produce that requirement. So, uh, in the KP, the, as a KPI that will come to their uh, job list. Then the in corporate performance monitor is that KPI will be monitored by the management through this software. So, they have the capability through the system they can manage, they can monitor. So, yeah, if, if in the question paper, if they ask the, the, the component of KPI is relevant to which of the component of uh, the, the KPI is relevant to which of the component of strategic management. So, the answer is corporate performance monitor. So, what is this business consolidation? This component can be used for consolidating actual result by company segment but also for simulating future scenarios for example, effect of a merge or acquisition. So, there can be so many business consolidation like acquisition, mergers and the, the, actually the, the this component what they will do is they will analyze the actual result uh, and uh, in the organization you know, there are so many segment, it means it is divided into so many segment like uh, let us say in the car manufacturing, uh, in the vehicle manufacturing uh, um, uh, company. So, there can be cars, bike and motorcycle and uh, uh, the, the, there are so many different different uh, products. So, that also the segment in that uh, area. So, it is divided into so many segment like that and uh, so, such kind of a planning uh, the, the business consolidation can be happen within the organization. So, uh, sometimes uh, we have seen that some of the organizations are merging with some other organization to achieve some kind of a task. Let us say if they want to build up a car, they need a tire. So, they will, they will have some mergers or acquisition with the some other companies or they will acquire some other companies. Uh, the, the production process and uh, that uh, let us say the company B, they are the people who will develop in the cars and all the rubber activities uh, to the, uh, the vehicles. So, uh, the, the company A is the big company that they will be uh, merging with that company, with the company B and then they will acquire their production process and they will be uh, dealing with together. So, business information collection, this component automates the collection of internal and external data. For the strategic management system, there is a requirement for internal and external data collection. So, this part, this component will do that. So, business information collection. So, this is what does this component does is they collect the information. So, all the business information which is related inside the organization and also the outside the organization will be collected together and feed into the system. So, this 
component of this uh, SCM is managing the information which is collected for through internal and external sources. Stakeholder relationship management SRM. So, stakeholders who are the stakeholders of the organization? They are the people who are dealing with the organization, they have the relationship with the uh, organization. So, uh, that management part also done by the strategic enterprise management. So, uh, long term success of an organization depends on its ability to establish and maintain relationship with key stakeholders group, invent investors, customers, employees, suppliers. So, there can be internal uh, relationship that they are going to make and also with the uh, external parties, external relationship also will be made uh, through the system. So, those relationship will be handled uh, through the strategic enterprise management system. So, these are the five component mainly discuss uh, uh, in this chapter. So, about strategic enterprise management. So, as an ex, uh, example question uh, they may ask how many component does the strategic enterprise management system have? How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it is talk about these 5, but in the next question paper if they ask stakeholder relationship management uh, the, the one co which is the correct component of the strategic enterprise management. So, they will be given one of these answers and also runs wrong answers. So, you have to select the best answer. So, likewise you can create your own question by looking at this uh, details right. Balance scorecard. What is this balance scorecard is? Uh, uh, this was established long time back actually uh, when they are planning the business. So, in the strategic planning, uh, so some uh, two people uh, that I uh, will I'll show you another video uh, which is related to this one, then you can understand uh, how they have built up the uh, balance scorecard also. Uh, I think it is there. Yes. Yes. So, uh, in the balance scorecard, there are four elements. What are those? You can see financial, international business processes, learning and growth, customer. So, the I will explain the what the theory behind is. In an any of the organization, these uh, component has to be aligned perfectly in order to run a smooth business. Let us say that you are going to achieve the vision and strategy. So, your organization will have a certain vision and in order to achieve the vision, you have a mission like uh, doing so many activities. So, in the financial aspect there can be so many activities to do, in the customers aspect you have so many activities to do and learning and growth the internal business process also same. So, there can be so many activities. So, all those activities which you are going to do in the organization has to be aligned well as balance. So, it is all these component has to be balanced together in order to achieve some tasks. Let us say in the finance what it talks about to succeed financially, how should we appear to our shareholders. So, there are some shareholders. So, we have to show that how do we appear fear financially, whether how we are financially worth for them. Uh, so, there are some objective, there are some measures, there are some targets, there are some initiative. Those things has to be aligned in this scorecard of financial. And then international business processes to satisfy your shareholders and customers what business process must we excel at what should we do best right so to satisfy the whom we are going to satisfy 
shareholders and customers. So, you are going to satisfy the shareholders and customers in the organization and then uh, uh, so we see what we can do best. We can do so many things to satisfy the shareholders and customers. So, let us say in order to satisfy the customer you are giving a very good services. When, when people enter into the uh, I will tell you one example uh, one organization has a very good system that has captured all the information about the customer. Let us say the customer is when customer is coming inside the organization from the face recognition they identify who will be coming. Then of course, that customer will be categorized to some of, of the categories of the organization like the, the best customer category A, the less than that category B likewise category A, B, C, D customers are there. So, they will be identified oh this customer is a category B A customer. So, when he entered into the organization someone go and uh, say can and also so some, uh, someone, some, someone should go and welcome that uh, customer. So, such kind of satisfaction also can be given. So, what we can do best is that. So, based on the facts we can do our best to satisfy the customer. Then customer will be satisfied when we go and talk with the customer uh, at the first step. And learning and growth to achieve our vision. So, we are going to achieve a vision and how will we sustain our ability to change and improve. So, we should have a learning growth strategy. We should learn by day by day. The organization and the staff also should be learning and they also give in their learning to their products and establish and uh, improve their product. So, then only we can sustain in the market. So, there is an ability to sustain if we improve a lot. So, there can be objectives, uh, measures and target and initiate those things has to be done and all these three things and also this one has to be aligned well. Customer, to achieve our vision, how should we appear to our customers? How do we should appear? What should our appearance to the customer? If it is a physical appearance or online appearance, we have to consider what should our appearance. We should show our customer that the, we are like this. We are our best, uh, best uh, organization in Sri Lanka. So, they have to enlist and the customer will be enlist our product and select that just yes, this company is the best company in Sri Lanka which produce this kind of product. So, we have to be appeared with the uh, customer in a well mannered way. So, uh, these four things when these four things are aligned together and doing uh, uh, their target as initiated. So, ultimately the organization which the vision will be achieved. So, in order to achieve the vision, so the all these things should be balanced together. So, let us say uh, if you are if you are not you are doing all these things financial in terms of business processes, learning and growth you will be doing, and but you are not appearing well to the customer. You do not have a customer um, uh, appearance place. So, you are not appearing well to the customer, you are alone. You do not have a website, you do not have a physical uh, appearance in the office, you do not have office, uh, uh, it is always in online and then this component is not there. If it is not there, what will happen? If it is not there, then the these business processes will not be processing well. So, uh, likewise uh, let us say financial part, if it is not happening well through all these business processes they earn a lot of money, but the financial people they will misuse money. So, will the company will run their business well? No. So, likewise all these 
things has to be balanced together in order to achieve the strategic objective. Uh, let us talk about the uh, detailed parts of that. When it is uh, described with the uh, customer, customer's pers perspective, what is the goal? Continuously improve customer satisfaction. So, we have to continuously improve the customer satisfaction. So, objectives decrease lead time, increase on time delivery, reduce customer complaints. So, there can be so many different activities as objectives to be achieved by your organization. So, there can be some people who are involved in this uh, uh, perspective. So, they have to continuously improve the customer satisfaction. Let us say that today the customer will buy your product and the service that you have given will be very much very very, very good. But later on the customer will identify their product is good, but their service after sales service is not good, then they will not be satisfied. So, after the sales also they have to continuously improve their customer satisfaction without fail. That is how you can in increase the objective of the organization uh, through the customer perspective. Internal business what are the goals? Continuously improve business process. So, you have to continuously improve the business process and uh, decrease cycle time, increase quality, increase productivity and the, the cycle of production has to be minimized. So, within uh, let us say today you are going to uh, develop a product within two days time. Now, uh, when you implemented uh, some technological uh, initiative to the products, then of course, you will be able to produce it within uh, 2 hour, 3 hour within one day like that, you can reduce the cycle time. So, uh, and increase the quality and you can increase the productivity of that based on the uh, incre increase of cycle time, uh, decrease of cycle time, you can increase the productivity also. So, measurement uh, also there. So, average cycle time, the, so these, these are the uh, measurements. So, through the through the uh, systems, strategic enterprise management system, these things can be measured. So, there should be a measurement in order to uh, take into the details. Let us say average cycle time, number of defect and the number of items reworked average output per employee, those these things has to be improved ultimately. So, as objective you are achieving this and uh, as a measurement you are achieving this. So, there is a there is something to be quantified. So, in number wise there should be some achievement. These are the measurement you have to understand. Okay, uh, innovation and learning. Continuously develop and deliver new innovative products and services. You have to continuously develop and innovate. So, innovation and learning should be there. So, if you are not learning and if you are not doing the innovative things to the product, ultimately your products will be obsolete. So, what you have to do is you have to include new features into your product daily. Then of course, your product will be uh, marketing will be uh, uh, flowing in the uh, good uh, in the market in a uh, higher level. So, all of the people will come and try to buy your product rather than buying other product. If you have initiated very good uh, innovation into the product, if you have very good product updated product, they will come and buy it. If your product is not updated, then they will not be buying that. Let us say uh, as a laptop, uh, if you take an uh, example of laptop. Uh, so, if the laptop does not have a very good new technology, so they will not be buying that. Let us say if your laptop does not have a webcam inbuilt, so will the people and come and buy it? No. So, now it has become a very in, very primary requirement of the laptop. So, likewise, so innovation and uh, the, the learning has to be happened continuously. Increase sales of new product and services that can be the 
objective uh, reduce development time and uh, what are the measures percentage of sales obtained from the new product and services average time from initial design to products. So, these are the uh, measurement that you can uh, identify as uh, as a quantitative fact and financial continue improve financial performance. So, when all these things are happening where yes, financial performance also will goes up. So, decreases cost. So, objectives that is one objective is uh, decreases cost, increase sales growth, increase market share, increase return on investment. So, those things as objective the financial perspective should achieve. You can decrease the cost, you can cut the cost, increase the sales growth, increase the market share and uh, ROI has to increase. So, uh, and then as a measurement average unit cost can be a measure and the growth rate in sales. Since today the growth rate is uh, 5, the next day growth rate will go goes to 6. Likewise, growth rate also can be increased. Companies market share also can be uh, uh, increased. So, return on investment. So, these are the measurements. So, as per this measurement, the, the strategic management uh, softwares will analyze these things. Based on that, they will take, uh, they will provide different, different uh, scenario of uh, analysis to consider for improvement. So, in the balance score card, these things has to be aligned well. If there is, uh, in case one uh, perspective is uh, not functioning well, uh, the whole system will be uh, in a, uh, will be demolished like. It means the production process cannot be continued if one of this uh, perspective is failing that will be continued that is all right, but the as per the requirement of the organization the outcome will not be coming. Okay, we will play a video about that. The balance scorecard. Measuring a company's performance is important. If something does not get measured and reported, then probably nobody in the company will be paying much attention to it. Traditionally, companies have relied on financial indicators in order to measure their performance. This worked well when most of a company's assets were physical and could be reflected in a company balance sheet, such as machines, buildings, and cash. However, these days a company's success no longer depends primarily on its physical assets but more on the less tangible factors such as the loyalty of its customers, the efficiency of its work processes, or the skills of its employees. These important topics don't show up anywhere on the company's financial statements, so we cannot track their progress by just looking at financial performance indicators. That is why Professor Robert Kaplan of Harvard Business School and management consultant David Norton developed the Balance Scorecard. They argue that, just as a pilot relies on more than one measure in order to fly a plane, managers need a broad set of performance indicators to lead a company towards success. In the balance scorecard, the company vision and strategy are at the center and are surrounded by measures along four perspectives, financial, customer, internal business process, and learning and growth. Let's have a look and see how the balance scorecard works. First, we draw the four dimensions. In the center, we write the vision or mission of the company. Say you run a coffee shop company and your goal is to become the best coffee shop in your city by serving delicious coffee and providing excellent service. Then we can start defining measures for each of the four dimensions. The financial measures reflect what the company's shareholders ultimately care about, including things like sales, gross margin, and net profit. However, your coffee shop can only have financial success if it has lots of happy and loyal customers. So in the customer dimension, 
you can measure how many customers you serve each month and how satisfied they are with your coffee. In order to do well along the customer dimension, a company must do its work well. This is measured by the business process perspective and deals with the question, what must we be good at in order to succeed as a business? Performance indicators here can include the time taking to process an order, time needed to prepare a coffee, and the number of complaints or quality incidents. Finally, a company needs to keep on learning and improving. The question, can we continue to improve and create value, is captured in the learning and growth perspective with measures that can include the skills acquired by company employees or the development of new items on the menu. In the end, all measures are related to each other. Only qualified baristas will be able to make good coffee and serve customers well. And only with good coffee and excellent service do customers come to your coffee shop, which in turn will lead to good financial results. So, to perform well financially in the future, companies need to do well on the customer, business process, and learning and growth dimensions today. This is why financial results are referred to as lagging indicators, since they tell us about past performance. Results related to the non-financial dimensions are called leading indicators. They give us information about future performance and need to be managed today in order to get good financial results tomorrow. The Balance Scorecard can serve as a performance management system for the entire company. As an example, for the customer dimension of the Balance Scorecard, say your coffee shop wants to maximize the number of customers and the level of customer satisfaction. It can then set specific targets for each of these goals and define a range of actions in order to reach these goals. Once this is done, the company can use the scorecard to track progress and take any corrective actions that may be needed. In this way, all the actions of a company are aligned with each other and contribute towards reaching its overall goal. That concludes the Balanced Scorecard. Check our other videos for... Okay, uh, I think that now it is clear to you about uh, what is the balance scorecard is. So, it talk about all the perspective of the uh, balance scorecard. So, uh, let us go to the questions. Then. How many perspective available in balance scorecard approach? How many? Four. So, we talk about that. So, you will not be uh, forgetting this one I think. So, and uh, what is uh, correct? perspective in balance scorecard approach. So, there are four, four perspective. So, one of that will be given. So, likewise uh, learning growth is one perspective. Balance scorecard can act as a powerful, powerful what? Organization framework. It is a very good powerful organization framework. So, that develop the organization. So, sometimes when you look at these answers, uh, those answers are very similar to balance scorecard, developing framework, survey framework, operational framework, development. So, but these things we will be talking about uh, some one aspect, but this is the correct one that is organization frameworks that could talk about all the four first perspective of the balance scorecard. So, in the question paper and here you can see what is the correct perspective. Is balance scorecard approach. So, sometimes there can be uh, let us say we can develop uh, uh, four another four, three question with this one learning and growth there can be other uh, one finance customer likewise. Uh, so, uh, you can uh, have another three questions you can build up the question. SAP what is this SAP? It is a systems, application and products. So, we call about ERP, we talk about ERP. So, SAP is a software that deal with the ERP uh, component. So, SAP has developed, SAP is an ERP that is developed to uh, deal with the functionalities of the organization 
to achieve the strategic objectives. So, uh, it has five components, what are those five components? we will talk about that one. So, business planning and simulations. So, uh, in the uh, in previous slide also, you may be, uh, let us go to that one. Here, we in here also we talk about this one. The same same thing is uh, discussing again. Under SAP, that the five components what they are discussing, looking at capacity requirement of different stages in business planning, they are looking at the capacity requirement and forecasting profits and loss, whether they are a profit, whether they are loss, the cash flow will be forecast. Focus on forward looking enterprise management rather than focusing on historical figures from quarterly or annual accounts. So, in the early days that we were talking about this uh, annual account, the, the figures which you have available as historical figures. So, based on that we would uh, have taken decision, but you have a system now, as for the system you can do this all these things. Corporate performance monitor, KPI is one thing, corporate, in corporate performance monitor, reflect the ideas of the balance scorecard. So, and business consultation, consult actual result by company or segment, but also for simulating future scenarios. Business information uh, crisis. So, I am reading this, I am not going to have seen this again, but please remember that this five about this five component, uh, so most of the time this will be asked in the question paper. So, business information collection automate the collection of internal and external data, a stakeholder relationship management, the SRMs. So, it is dealing with uh, other stakeholders stakeholder of the organization. So, so actually this is communicating uh, with the others. So, communication strategy will be implemented this uh, stakeholder relationship management component. So, let us uh, when there is a SAP ERP, uh, you have to remember these things, these five compo component, especially these five component is available in the SAP. Right. So, this is the main question they will be asking in the question paper. So, how as questions uh, I have what I, the question I have given here is uh, there are three three questions. Uh, one is uh, how many components uh, does a SAP strategic enterprise management have? How many components? There are five. Here these are the five. So, let us talk about five components. Which of the following is an example of ERP, the SAP? and also they are Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics. So, there are some other uh, ERPs and we had Pronto earlier, now most of the companies are not using that one. And name two method of storing ERP system, one premise or cloud base. So, these things are irrelevant, name two method of, of storing ERP. So, where do you go into store the ERP. Once it is developed for you, you have purchased the ERP, it is developed for you. So, now they are going to install in your uh, system. So, they will be asking the supplier, the, the, uh, the service provider, uh, the software guy come and ask, okay, where are we going to store the uh, ERP, where are we going to install the ERP. So, there are only two things. One is on your premise, the other one is cloud base. You can do only these two things. In the SAP ERP, there is a SAP architect. So, you do not need to go into the detail of the, the technical hierarchy of this one. Under technical hierarchy, there are so many other uh, information about uh, these layers. So, as a front view, view so we will be uh, talking about this uh, SAP architecture. 
So there are three layers. So in the question paper, I ask how many layers are there in SAP architect? How many? Presentation layer one, application layer two, database layer three. So there are three layers. And presentation layer is the slide of PC, right? Application layer is the layer that the server is processing. So, this is the application server. So, there is a server that deal with the applications. This is where the, uh, the, the system is installed. This is where the database is installed. So, there are two things, three things you have to identify. This is very clear to you, I think. Uh, from this appearance, from this image, uh, it will come to your mind uh, when the question comes as uh, how many uh, SAP architects are there, what are the SAP architects, what are the layers of the SAP architecture. So, if it is asked like that, so you have to remember this uh, image. So, there is a front layer, that is a presentation layer, that is the layer that there, uh, there are some computers. So, th those uh, they are the users. The users will access the system. This is where the application is installed. This is where the ERP is installed. And there is a backend layer. What is this backend layer? Is database. So this is where the information is stored. So when this person, when this presentation layer person is required some information that will go to this application layer retrieve from the database. The data will be retrieved to this application server and then it goes to the SAP. This is how it's appearing. And uh, SAP ERP uh, we will be talking about uh, what are the other uh, elements in the SAP ERP. So, one thing is uh, financial accounting. So, as you are doing the financial accounting uh, in, in the syllabus, uh, so this these things will be very known to you and CO uh, the controlling, treasury controlling. So, there can be so many controlling platform in built in this uh, SAP ERP and treasury management also there you can manage the treasury of your organization and project systems and warehouse the inventories. So, those things will be managed and industry solutions that also there and human resource management expert. So, there are system to manage the human resource plant maintenance and quality management and production man planning and material management and sales and distribution. Likewise, there are so many uh, component, right. Sometimes when you are buying this product, the SAP ERP, so we will be using some of the component of this uh, functionalities. Let us say you do not need any uh, plant maintenance, so you do not have any plants, you do not have any machineries in your, uh, you are not a factory people. So, you are, you do not need to buy this component. You can buy this course based on their purchase, based on their requirement, they will be customizing this product into your organization. So, then of course, you can purchase the purchase what is required for your organization. So, these are the um, some of the component. Uh, we talk about many components in about uh, ERPs in previous slide. So, please remember those things. Uh, this is a very good topic, material requirement planning. What is this material requirement planning is? It is a technique for deciding the volume and timing of materials in manufacturing and conditions. This is in the manufacturing environment. So, especially this is used for factory environment in most of the factories. Uh, this, of, this was established some most uh, some time back in early 90s, uh, 1970 or somewhere. So, first establishment was, was done 
and uh, this is used for re planning the materials. So, in the production process there are some materials. So, there is a MRP 1, MRP 2, we will talk about the MRP 2 later. So, uh, about the MRP 1, uh, what is MRP, MRP 1 is that is designing the volume, it is a quantity, the quantity is measures that is calculating the quantity, that is calculating the materials and timing of material when you need that one is also analysis. So, purpose of an uh, MRP 1 system is calculate the quality and when it will be required, calculate the quality of quantity sorry quantity of materials requirement determine when they will be required. So, these are the two main uh, purposes of MRP 1. In the question paper, if they ask what are the two main component of MRP 1, oh, one of the following is an purpose of an MRP 1. So, they will be giving this answer. So, likewise, now you can uh, write your own questions and study and you can make it as a note calculate the quantity and when it is, it is required are the two purposes of MRP 1. So, material requirement are calculated from where? Known future orders, firm orders already received from the customers. When the customer is place an order, there will be requirement. Let us say come the customer A need to uh, need the in a, a required uh, production of uh, uh, 1000 products. So, he will be ordering 1000 products, then you have to uh, give the 1000 products to the customer. So, based on that, so you are going to plan your materials. Let us say for in order to develop uh, produce 1000 of uh, cars, let us say uh, is a car uh, purchaser he will be uh, ordering uh, 10 cars. So, for his order, so you are going to materialize the requirement. So, you are calculating the quantity of materials. So, MRP 1 is talking about materials. We remember when there is a, this word is coming material requirement planning MRP 1, there is this is dealing with materials, right. When the sales people, uh, when the uh, when the customer is ordered ten cars, so we'll have to define how many quantity of material required to produce ten cars, and also when it is required, based on that one, based on this uh, requirement at what 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 time is uh, calculating the quantity of materials also. Let us say you need the uh, cars within uh, one month's time. So, order is 10 cars. So, you have to produce 10 cars and give to the customer within one month's time. Then you can uh, materialize, you can quantify the uh, materials required for, for the production. Uh, then of course, you can do. Let us say that you need that customer need the cars. Uh, after 6 months, uh, within 6 month duration. So, you do not need to hurry to develop that cars. So, you can develop that cars with some other requests of some other customers. Let us say the customer C is requesting 100 cars. So, customers uh, 4 is requesting uh, uh, 200 cars. So, all together how many cars? 210 cars. So, you are going to develop that and give the 210 cars within 6 month duration including the 10 cars uh, requested by the customer A. So, then the material quantity of material also can be analyzed accordingly. So, so it is kind of a plan technique used in uh, manufacturing environment. That forecast of uh, other future orders, the reasonable degree of confidence will be received. So, uh, if you are having a very good material planning uh, system in your organization, 
uh, normally in see Sri Lanka does not does not need such kind of things. So, if it is in the manufacturing environment, if they need such kind of a system like this, so they can handle the materials ultimately uh, let us say when the cars are producing they need the materials in hand. Otherwise, if materials are delaying, so they cannot uh, give the final product to the customer. So, uh, this material requirement planning softwares will uh, manage that uh, request uh, the requirement efficiently. What is MRP 1? There is the question that I have given to you. A uh, materials requirement planning a technique for deciding the volume and timing of materials that is the MRP 1 that is the technique for design the volume and timing of material. Here also you see, you see mentioned designing the volume and timing of material the same thing is given as an one answer. MRP 1 enables manufacturing organization to do which of the following determine when to order materials by working back from when they will be required for production. So, this is the concept. So, it is talking about the materials and when they need that materials. The timing is observed in this uh, questions. Here we talk about timing. Determine when they will be required. So, that is determine when, when they will be required for production. Same thing is given as an one answer in the question paper. Bill of materials, what is this bill of material is? In the production environment, there can be a material bill. The BOM is the normally we call BOM is a grouping of high level structure used in the manufacturing process and consists of several individual materials or component. Let us say if to develop one car, how many materials you require? So, there is a order for manufacturing one car. In order to satisfy the order, in order to give the order and produce that order, what you have to do is you have to collect the material. So, you are writing the materials requirement in a piece of paper. Let us say you need 4 tyres, 4 rims and engine parts and so many there are there can be thou, thousand of uh, materials required first. So, you materials do for dual of one car you require this kind of materials. So, BOM is a bill of materials. It has the information of the material required for the order. The bill of material of production structure is a list of raw materials. Here see, it is a list of raw materials, sub assemblies, intermediate assemble, sub component parts, quantities of each needed to manufacture an end product. A bomb may be used for communication between manufacturing partners or confined to a single manufacturing plant. Let us say when you are developing a car, you may need some manufacturing partners. So, the battery of the car will be manufactured by someone else. Let us say it is, if it is a hybrid car, so hybrid battery will be manufactured by some other S, not by the Toyota Lanka. Toyota, to, not by Toyota like. So, Toyota uh, let us say as an example Toyota. Uh, so, they will be require some bill of materials, they will be designing some bill of materials uh, to produce some uh, cars. So, in the bill of materials it asks about to provide uh, uh, some tyres, some uh, radiators like right. so. So, this part will be manufactured by some other else. So, it is easy for uh, the, the company like Toyota to uh, communicate with the manufacturing partners when they have bill of materials. Uh, so, in this example uh, that will be clear to you the single level bill of materials right. This is the finished good, good uh, product in uh, this color 
and also in green color uh, other sub materials are there. So, in order to develop a wheelbarrow, let us say you are going to develop a wheelbarrow, you are going to uh, produce this one. So, what, are, what do you need? You need wheels, it has a wheel, right? so you need wheels and legs here yeah. and handles, you need a handle like this and you need bucket, you need this bucket. So, you are going to produce this one. So, this is these are the requirement, right. But please remember under this also this is a single level, no? so this is a single level in order to be, uh, develop this product you would use this one. There will be, the, be other level also in here like this uh, under wheels there can be tires, nut and bolts in the leg also, handle also that there can be some, some, some rubber. Uh, rubber eating ingredients also there and also in the bu bucket uh, uh, some other uh, parts also can be there nut and bolt. Likewise, uh, under this also we can materialize, we can build the materials like right? this is a single level there can be uh, the second level, third level like that. Manufacturer resource planning MRP 2. It is a plan for planning and monitoring all resources. So, please remember when it comes to MRP 2, MRP 1 also included in this inside this one. In the MRP 1, we talk about material requirement planning, right. Please remember MRP the same uh, characters, but it is talk about materials. Here we talk about what? Manufacturing resource planning, that is not material requirement planning, right? That is manufacturing resource planning. Please remember this one. Ma material requirement planning is the MRP 1. MRP is 1 is stand for material requirement planning. MRP 2 is stand for manufacturing resource planning. The resources are required for manufacturing environment is and is here, is plan here, right. So, it is a MRP 2 is a plan for planning and monitoring all the resources. So, it is planning and plan, plan for planning and monitoring all the resources, is plan in the resources, it does not plan the manufacturing requirement, right. So, MRP2 is a computerized system that incorporates a single database used by many different areas of the organization. So, it is a computerized system. MRP2 is a sophisticated system that enables optimal inventory control. The inventory required for the production will be optimized here. So, they will provide the requirement to the production line based on the machine of supply and demand, based on the supply and demand, there will be uh, developing this uh, inventory, they will be uh, having this inventories in hand. So, for the manufacturing environment, manufacturing resource planning is there. What are the component of MRP2? Production planning, to product the, to plan the products, you must need this one. Master product schedules and item uh, master data. Bill of material, BOM also here. Bill of materials also uh, here. Capacity planning and capacity requirement planning. So, it has the capacity planning, it also has the capacity requirement planning. It is planning the capacity. MRP 1 also a component of MRP 2. MRP 1 is material requirement planning, forecasting, demand and supply. So, when the uh, production process people, they want to forecast the demand. Based on the demand, they will be forecast in their material manufacturing resources. And what is required for the production line will be forecasted based on demand and supply. 
purchasing inventory control and order entry. So, those things also handled by this MRP2. Operational operations control, production resource data and shop flow control, those are the things control in the operational platform. Financial analysis including standard costing and cost card, there are so many activities in finance analysis also will be managed by this MRP2 as a component. So, we will see what are the benefit of MRP1 to that reduce the stock out, better customer service. So, there will not be any stock out. So, you have the stock in hand, then you can give the better customer service. Reduce inventory holding costs. You do not need to have more inventories in hand, you know what is the requirement is. So, you can have a limited space to store your inventories. You do not need to hold more inventories in your manufacturing environment. So, that reduce the inventory holding cost. So, there is a cost involvement when you have more inventory in your hand. So, that is how it does. Improves plant facilities utilization. So, it improves the plant facilities utilization. So, utilization also improved by using this MRB2. Reliable load fulfillment time. Reliable order fulfillment time. So, there is a order that has to be fulfilled fulfill in on time. So, this is managed by using this MRP2. So, if there are 1000 goods, if there are 10 goods uh, to be provided to the customer, so that will be planned uh, by the MRP2. So, if they need it within, uh, let us say, customer is ordering 10 cars. So, you know the system will say, okay, the we can give the, we can give 10 cars within 10 days or 1 month. So, if the, uh, if there is another customer is asking 100 cars, you know what will be the timing. So, you know how do you fill the orders, time, at the t correct time you can give the orders to the customer. The, Reduce crisis management time. It reduces the crisis management. So there can be crisis like you don't have the materials, you don't have any, uh, you couldn't have space to space to keep the inventories, and you don't have space to keep the finished good. So there can be so many uh, crises will happen in the manufacturing environment if you do not have MRP2. So, crisis management also will be done in this MRP2. So, it is manageable now because so there is a benefit. So, disadvantage, what are the disadvantages? Rely on information. Yes, it is rely on information. Based on the information you have, you are planning that. Let us say, you are planning to produce 1000 of goods in April month. So, April is the new year season. So, all of the people in Sri Lanka, they will tend to buy this product. But suddenly due to COVID situation, it was came down. So, you rely on the information you had and it was a disadvantage. So, you have developed your products. Now, products have in your uh, premise, but you cannot so sell that products because of this pandemic situation. So, be you based on the information you had, you made those products. So, there can be some issues like that, there can be some disadvantages like that. Increase material cost. Sometimes the material cost can be also be uh, increased based on that and also due to some other factors in the production process. Hazard of production shutdown or shut, slow down due to a machine uh, failure. So, production can be uh, shut down. Even the, uh, even the systems have taken the orders to produce because of the uh, production environment failure, 
what will happen you cannot produce the product as required by the customer. So, you will be failing that component. Hazard stock out, your stock out. So, you can have more stock or less stock. So, uh, there can be issues like that. Uh, implementation difficulties, sometimes the implementation of MRP is difficult. If the people who are working in the organizations are not accepting this kind of uh, planning techniques. So, people in the organization has to be accepted these things and also when the implementation is going on, they have to be on time to uh, operate that those activities. So, uh, the, the, there can be advantages and disadvantages also. So, mostly in the um, MRP2, uh, these benefits are talk about, not like disadvantages. Manufacturing resource planning, so as a one question we will be asking. Uh, manufacturing resource planning or MRP2 can be described as which of the following? Here a plan for planning and monitoring all the resources for of a for manufacturing company. Here same thing I think here a plan for planning and monitoring all the resources of a manufacturing company. So, MRP2 is does what? Planning resources in manufacturing environment. When the MRP2 words appear, you can directly uh, memorize the word that is manufacturing resource planning, not the material requirement planning, right. Material requirement planning is MRP1, manufacturing resource planning is MRP2. MRP2 is a sophisticated system that enables optimum inventory control based on which of the following that enables the optimum inventory. Here we talk about that no optimum inventory. Yes. So, they, they that enables optimum inventory control. What is uh, enabling that? Matching invoices to payments? No. Matching of supply and demands. So, by matching the supply and demands, we talk about the supply and demand. Based on the supply and demand, we forecast the uh, production. So, we forecast the inventory based on that. So, let us say in next uh, January, uh, in, 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 in uh, December, we may need more production, we products uh, to be placed in the market, because there can be more sales in uh, December. Then, you are planning the inventory so, so, based on that target. So, so, based on the supply and demand in December, you are planning the inventory. So, your inventory will be controlled based on that uh, matching. The bill of material shows all the parts required to make what one item. Bomb is for one item. Let us say for in order to produce one item, there is a material requirement. So, if it is for uh, 1000, so automatically you can calculate based on the B bomb. Uh, what will be the re material requirement? MRP1 we versus MRP2. What is the difference? When you are looking for an MRP system, it is important to distinguish between material requirements planning, sometimes referred to as MRP1, and manufacturing resource planning, known as MRP2. Where did MRP2 come from? MRP1 was some of the first business software to be widely adopted during the 1970s. MRP was created initially to supply the Polaris missile program. Then, in 1964, as a response to the Toyota manufacturing program, Joseph Orlecki developed material requirements planning, MRP, 
further. The first company to use MRP was Black & Decker in 1964. Orlicky's 1975 book, Material Requirements Planning, has the subtitle The New Way of Life in Production and Inventory Management. It was the first hardcover book on the MRP subject. By 1975, MRP was implemented in 700 companies. This number had grown to about 8,000 by 1981. Manufacturers purchased these systems in order to improve efficiency and accuracy when it came to materials planning, ordering process, and inventory management. By the 1980s, manufacturers realized they needed software that could also plan other companies' important resources, like machines. Also, there was added automation of important operations, like quality control, shop floor control, and standard accounting to gain an overview of financial resources. Can you still buy MRP1 software? Legacy manufacturing software vendors such as SAP, Epicor, Microsoft, Oracle and IQMS traditionally offer MRP2 or actually manufacturing ERP functionality. If to speak about modern, lightweight, cloud-based software solutions there are still many MRP1 providers. Though, as MRP2 has effectively replaced MRP1 software, you would be hard-pressed to look for manufacturing software that's limited to basic material requirements planning. Indeed, most manufacturers can benefit tremendously from the added functionality MRP2 systems offer. What is the difference between MRP2 and ERP? Enterprise Resource Planning ERP, software packages development was developed many decades ago as a financial software initially. Their core module was accounting, core financials, with such parts like general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash management, fixed assets, etc. Relatively quickly, Inventory Stock Management module was added, alongside with CRM Customer Relationship Management, Procurement purchasing, and Human Resources with Payroll module. If we are speaking about the legacy providers mentioned previously, as they started several decades ago, all their ERP software packages also include a production module, and these modules are MRP2. However, if to speak about modern, affordable, cloud-based ERP systems, then most of them aren't manufacturing ERP systems, as manufacturing planning functionality is absent. Deer Inventory, Dynamic 365, Trade Gecko, Workday, Unleashed. Okay, so from that video, I hope that uh, you got a very good understanding about the ERP and from the other slide that I have given to you also we have given a very good understanding. So, it is talk about the differentiation of the MRP 1 and MRP 2 and also how it develop up to ERP. So, at the initial stage uh, material requirement planning the MRP 1 was uh, there, they were handling the materials thereafter they were they want to uh, handle the resources in the manufacturing environment and also some other functionalities like payroll and also other customer relationship management, HRM, those things were added later and it ultimately became a ERP. So, that uh, I think uh, the main difference that you can identify in ERP, uh, MRP is uh, MRP 1 and MRP 2 is the MRP 1 is used for materials, MRP 2 is for used for uh, resources. So, the, from that two uh, things that you can identify the what the difference is and you can answer for the examination accordingly. So, let us come to uh, the principle of ERP system. There are two principles. What are the two principles of ERP system? In the question paper, if they ask, what are the two main principles of ERP system? Measure performance, integrate with other system. Those are the two 
principles. Please remember this, sometimes they will be asked, I am not going to create any question, you can create your own question by using this sign, right. So, uh, one of the below uh, principle is an, uh, one of the below uh, element is an principle of ERP system. If the questions comes like that, you answer, you have to answer for the correct answer by using these two answers. They say measure performance, integrate with other system, those two answers can be given. And so, uh, uh, so in measure performance, you know that uh, the ERP, using the ERPs, uh, that can uh, measure the performance of the uh, process whether the HR facility is working well, whether the production functionality and also marketing, sales, procurement, though whether those things are uh, performing well will be managed, managed by the ERP. So, integration with other systems. So, ERP has to be integrated with other system in the procurement, finance, uh, in the CSC Lanka, let us say, uh, the finance system, HR system, examination system, registration system, member relation system and also taxation system and there are so many other system, auditing system like uh, those all the systems are integrated together. If the, if the, if you have purchased a SAP ERP, you do not have, uh, uh, they have the component of examination system and uh, registration system functionalities. So, you will have to build up and if it is already built up, so you can integrate those system with the ERP system that you have purchased at present. Okay. Major component of ERP system, what are the major component? Did we talk about this one? Yes, uh, some of the information we talk about this, about this. Let us talk about the major component, finance that consists of general ledger, account receivable, account payable. So, the ERP system that you are going to purchase will be handle this financial component. So, there can be general ledgers, account receivable, account payable. So, if you are having a ERP system, nowadays you do not need to prepare your balance sheet. That will automatically comes uh, when you are doing handling these systems. So, management and cost accounting, management accounting or cost accounting. It is a management information system which analyzes data to provide information as a basis of for managerial actions. In order to take the managerial actions, there is a component called management accounting that will be used. And that concern of management accounting is to present con accounting information in the form of form most helpful to management. In a pictorial way, in a graphical way, the information can be presented by using this ERP management accounting component. So, that component what it does is, uh, that will give a pictorial information, the descriptive information in a graphical way to the management in order to take their decision easily. So, treasury management. What is treasury management this? Treasury management is a separate discipline from both management accounting and financial accounting. Although the small organization, their roles may be carried by, uh, out by the same person. So, treasury uh, available in your organization also will be managed by the ERP system. So, there is a separate uh, entity, the uh, component called treasury management to manage those uh, transactions. And uh, in the next slides, we will be talking about that uh, further. And inventory management also, they are to control then manage the inventories. And also, human resource management system is there to manage the human resources and sales and distribution system is there to take the orders, uh, sell, sell it and also distribute it. There are so many activities in only sale and distribution uh, component. 
and procurement you can do the e procurement and also open the bids and so many kind of procurement activities can be handled by using this uh, ERP component. Uh, master data management the data available in the organization will be uh, captured by using this ERP system and that will be stored in uh, databases. So, in the database then through the master data management that will be queried and give the output as reports. Then uh, it is easy for the managers to take their decision by using this component of master data management. Uh, if you talk about finance, we in the ERP system uh, journal entries will be coded in the general data and outside of the system. This is how the financial system work in the ERP system. Uh, ERP platform, sales, scammy receivable ledger, general ledger, management information, purchasing payable ledger, likewise these things will be handled. So, let us go to a question, which of the following could be considered as an element of an ERP finance component? In the ERP finance component, what would be the element? Here it is talk about the le general ledger. General ledger is the key term in the financial uh, component of the ERP. So, this is the answer. So, sometimes this kind of questions will come to the examinations. Management accounting. So, example of reports under the remit of the management accountant includes the following, the cost schedules in management accounting also handled by the uh, ERP systems. So, when they are handling the uh, management accounting through uh, ERP system, they are some kind of uh, example reports. So, what are those example reports? Cost schedules, there can be cost schedules for each of the item of productions there can be a cost. So, that is schedule when you need is what are the cost in, uh, expenses, what is the cost activity and uh, when it will be happening. Likewise, there are can be so many cost schedules and also budget. Budget is a very good key, uh, key uh, term that uh, you can, uh, you have already you may have learned this one from your organization if you are working for. So, in as financial guys, you may know about what the budget is. Let us say uh, as an example, uh, I think from the next slide we are talking about that one also. So, I will brief on that now and uh, if you are going to plan the next year budget, what are the items that you are putting in. Likewise, you can plan the next year, next month, the next week, likewise you can plan your budget. And the variance report is the budget and the actual is the variance. So, there can be a budgeted figures and also there can be actual figures. So, that can be a variance that you can show as a report. And uh, one question I have put here, uh, what is the cost correct example for reported example reported management accounting? Uh, yeah. Example reported management accounting when the word that comes to your mind, example of report in management accounting, example report in management accounting. What are those example reports? Cost shadows, budgets and variance report, those are the three. Here the answer is cost schedules. So, what are cost schedules? Cost schedules are list of expenses. So, there are lists of expenses incurred by manufacturing units when products producing the product. When the, when the factory people are producing the products which is required by the management or the customer, there are list of expenses. So, so there can be cost card, standard cost card. So, in the list for example, there can be cost card for the cost card will include for for a certain for a certain product, what is the direct material cost? The material cost cost also will be given. In order to produce the car, let's say uh, the, the the car whatever the car that lay, 
what is the base car? Hmm. Let us say Audi car over there. So, in order to develop Audi car, uh, there is a requirement for materials. So, that co cost will be scheduled here. So, labor cost. What is the labor charges? How many days, days you require for uh, laborers to uh, produce that products? So, there is a labor charges. So, that also include and variable cost, there can be so many costs varying. It means in the production process, there can be various type of costs in no amount, not like the fixed cost. There can be fixed cost also, fixed overhead. So, those things will be in the standard cost card. So, sometimes uh, if the people in the if, in the question paper, they will be asking one of the um, item is an uh, a, following is an item of the standard cost card. So, you then you have to select one of these, if it is available and direct material is the standard cost card and what is the, uh, is it correct or wrong? So, you have to answer for that one and cost schedules are the list of expenses, right? Please remember that is the list of expenses type of decision that can be assisted by cost schedules. What are the decisions that can be assisted by cost schedules? Right? Break even. It means how many products to make in order to cover the cost. So, let us say uh, in order to cover the cost, How many products that you want to produce? Let us say from uh, you are going to develop a uh, small bowl, cricket bowl. So, how many cricket balls should be produced to come into the break even? In this, there can be a level uh, that you read the cost in normal. Let us say you spend about uh, 1 million for that one, then after selling of, uh, uh, after producing of, uh, after selling of uh, let us say uh, to 5 million or 2 million, you will be re reaching the break even. So, in order to cover the cost, how many products produce, products you require? Then after producing this uh, 2 million of uh, uh, products, you will cover the cost of 10 million products. Key factor analysis, what are the key factor analysis such as whether to produce product in house or outsource production. So, based on the cost schedules, let us say you are going to develop a car and you are going to develop the batteries for the cars as well. You are going to, so all these things will be developed in house. Let us say you are to produce a car, what you require is, uh, you require tires, you require batteries, you require body parts, you require uh, some other engine parts. So, uh, when you are scheduling the course, you feel that when you producing batteries, it takes high cost. Why do not we outsource that? Let us then think about uh, outsourcing that to other party. So, there is another company, they will uh, produce only the batteries. So, their production uh, process is very efficient. So, they are the expert on that. They can produce that products and give to the customer at a very lower cost. So, why do not we buy that from that supplier? So, we remove that production line, then we outsource that one. So, that key factor analysis can also can be done you by you looking at the cost schedules. Pricing, how much to sell products in order to maximize the profit? So, in order to obtain a certain profit, how many products, uh, what is the pricing that you have to do? Let us say uh, you are going to uh, d produce uh, one car that is uh, 
uh, 1 lakh rupees, then that is the cost in normal, then you are going to sell it at 150. So, what is the profit? 50,000. So, if you sold uh, uh, 10 cars, what is the profit? 500,000. Likewise, you can you can uh, analyze your profit and also you can maximize the profit by using cost card, you know what is the actual cost involved and also then you can decide on the pricing. You can decide on the pricing by using these cost schedules. Investment appraisal, for example, should new equipment be purchased. So, you are going to analysis. So, from your production process, uh, there were so many co machineries used that machinery one does not provide very good uh, uh, production. So, you are going to purchase a new equipment. So, based on the cost schedules, you know that expenses of the machinery. So, then you know that machinery is not worth to continue. So, let us uh, buy a new equipment. Likewise, immense investment appraisal also can be there. Let us say uh, you have a cost schedule like uh, that you know that uh, you have 10 machines, you can develop 10 cars or 10 products, let us say 10 products. So, in order to develop 10 products, you have 10 machines. So, you have a huge number of orders, custom orders. So, you need to develop thousand of uh, products. Now, we, what you want to do? You have to invest on new equipment. Then you can invest and then you can uh, cater for the uh, requirement. So, I think it is very much explained to you now. Let us go to the questions. Standard cost card may record what? here direct material, direct labor, area purpose. So, likewise we can develop how many questions was this one? 1, 2, 3, 4. We can develop 3 questions. Standard cost card may include direct material, stack cost card may include uh, record uh, direct labor cost. Likewise, you can develop other, other questions as well. What type of decision? would assess when cost scheduling. What are the decision? They should be assist right. What are the decisions would assist when uh, cost scheduling? When you are deciding on the um, cost scheduling, what is the decision will be taken? Here we talk about that. There are four decision. What is break even? what will be the break even, key fact analysis and pricing, investment. So, those are the four, four uh, type of decision. Okay, give me one minute. Okay, uh, budget. Here we talk about three uh, example report, right? First one we talk about cost schedules. Then you go to the budget. What is budget? Plan of revenues and expenses that the organization expect for a forthcoming period. Uh, plan of revenues and expenses that the organization expect for forthcoming period. Revenue and expense will be planned. So, for next year, the revenue is like this. How many uh, product will be sold, then how many, <coughs> how much of income that you will be receiving for the organization, and what are the expenses. So, you are planning the future requirement. You are planning for the future, for next year, 
what will be the revenue plan, what will be the expenses plan. So, you are budgeting on that one. So, budget may be produced for the business as a whole as for the individual department. So, you can have a department budget, right. So, in department wise you can budget it and that ultimately you are budgeting will be come to the uh, organization wise. So, you can buy the budget in the department wise and as well as uh, uh, whole organization after collecting the departmental budget you can uh, do the whole organization budget. The variance the difference between actual and the budget is the various. Uh, the cost schedules uh, should be compared to the budget and any difference are encountered. encountered. These differences are called variance and the variance report details the differences between the actual and budgeted cost. So, uh, the you may be by you may have budgeted then you will see the uh, actual. Uh, the next year uh, you are going to budget about uh, uh, 100 million is the budget. Let us say for the expenses you will require 100 million as well the revenue you require this much of uh, figures. So, but there can be a, a actual like uh, you do not need such uh, you, you, you are exceeding the budget you will need uh, 150 million. So, you have exceeded 50 million. So, that is the variance. So, in the variance report uh, you will be providing the uh, in the va variance performance as well how, how it has happened. So, I think uh, these two things are uh, clear to you now. Cost schedules, budget, variance report. Let us talk about the other things. Treasury management, this is the main topic under this management accounting. Here we call about now we talk about financial management accounting and treasury management now we are going to talk about. The treasury manager, treasurer take the following decisions. What are they going to do? Should the firm borrow from a bank or raise fund by issuing shares? Let us say the based on the sales forecast, based on the budget, you know what are the expenses. When it comes to actual of the last year, so you are comparing that one, then you compare that uh, and see okay. In order to operate this organization, we need to borrow some money from the bank. So, your management will take one decision, okay, we will take a 100 million of loan. So, you take a worth of 100 million loan in order to operate your organization. So, tre tre treasurer will take the following decision based on the management decisions. And also you can raise the fund by issuing shares. You can issue more shares and raise fund. You can issue let us say you have 100,000 of shares, you will be seeing 1500. So, additional 500 of shares will be issued to the market and you will be getting that from income. How much should be paid as a dividends and what for the shares that you issued? what will be the dividend that you will be receiving that is measured here. And should the firm spend money on new or money on new machineries. So, on new machineries where the whether the uh, firm should spend for uh, new machineries that also will be taken by the uh, treasurer the decision will be taken. How much credit should be given to the customer? So, whether we can issue the uh, credit to the customer. Likewise, those decisions can be taken based on the financial worthiness of the uh, 
organization that will be measured by the treasury management of the ERP that you are going to develop, going to implement. So, this decision can be taken by looking at the information of the treasury management component of the ERP. So, uh, when all these come into your mind, please remember that all these things are integrated in, uh, as information in the uh, ERP system. Then of course, when taking decisions, this uh, research management component will be assisting you. Inventory management, the other part of the uh, ERP, here yeah, we talk about major component, first one we talk about, second one, third one, this is the fourth one, inventory management. Type of inventories, what are the type of inventories available in your organization? Raw materials you can have, spare parts consumable, work in no progress, finished good. So, uh, these things are very clear to you uh, when we uh, take this example. What is the raw materials? Raw material of a furniture company would be wood. The wood used for making the furniture is the raw material. If you want to build up a house, you need some woods uh, for windows and uh, for cupboard and so, so some so many items, the wood items. So, in order to develop that one, you need the materials. So, wood is a material, that is a raw materials in your production line also. When you are going to develop some, uh, 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 let us say, uh, chemical foods, chemical products. So, you need some raw materials. If you are going to develop a sanitizing uh, uh, liquid, so there can be some chemical raw materials that you need to develop that. Uh, uh, sanitary uh, liquid. Likewise, uh, consumable would be items such as nails, screw, casters. So, consumable when you are developing a product, you need some consumable items. Those items will be you uh, required to de de deal with the raw material as well. So, you are go, you need the spare parts in order to develop a car, you need some spare car parts and also develop a bicycle, let us say, you need some nut and uh, screws and also rims, though there are so many spare parts. Work in progress would be partly completed finished good. Let us say, uh, you are developing a car, car engine was developed, body was developed, you have fixed that one you do not have batteries and uh, you do not have uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, tyres. So, then that is in the work in progress, still the product is not finished. In the work in progress is the finish is not, uh, the uh, product is not finished, it is partly completed. As an example, plastic computer furniture, if it is a furniture without legs, so it is a partly computer furniture that is in the work in progress. So, finished good, finished good uh, like table, chairs, desks, uh, that is for, uh, that is ready for the sale. If it is a car that is fully manufactured and all the items are fixed, then uh, it is uh, go, go, they are going to put it to the market for sale. So, that is the finished good. So, inventory in inventory all these four materials, all these uh, uh, items will be available. So, in the inventory management in the ERP, so these things will be managed. What is the raw materials that will be managed and also capable uh, items that also will be managed in the what is the work in progress item and the finished good item. So, all these things are in the uh, inventory management system. So, all the information available, available in the factory environment, let us say as an example in the factory environment, when the cars are developed, 
develop the as finished good that will be feed it into the system how many cars are developed. Likewise, what is the uh, cars in the work in progress where based on the work in progress uh, cars uh, partly complete as cars you are planning that within next uh, few days we will be able to make those partly completed work in, uh, in progress cars as finished good. So, you know how to plan uh, by using those uh, information available in the inventory management system of ERP. Okay, uh, let us talk about uh, uh, these uh, some of the four questions. Management of cost accounting could be described as what? A management information system which analysts data to provide information as a basis of managerial actions. So, this is the answer, this uh, the same thing is given in the theoretical slide that I have given to you. Uh, so, and the other one is with the inventory management function, inventory control include which of the following? Budget is it equal? No. Customer credit management? No. Inventory ordering and purchasing that is included there. How many type of inventory is available in the inventory management? How many inventories? Four. Here. Yeah. This, these are the four elements. See. Yeah. What is the correct statement for work in progress? Uh, work in progress is mentioned as a question. Work in progress are partly finished good. It is asked here. Normally, why see this word? When you see this word raw materials, you know that what are the raw materials. When you see the consumable, you know that. When you see the finished goods, you get into understanding that okay, this is what is mean. But when it goes to work in progress, sometimes you are not understanding by reading this uh, word. That is why the when 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 question uh, uh, making people are uh, making the questions, they are keen on that they identify that student is uh, missing this uh, information in their from their memory. So, uh, they, uh, they identify as uh, main factor of this uh, this information. Uh, so, the main thing is working in progress when we are comparing other things. So, that is what they are putting this as an uh, example of answers. So, actually this answer uh, I think I created oh yeah, may be. So, uh, the question is what is the correct space statement for working in progress in inventory management. So, that is explained in here as work in progress are partly finished products. So, uh, those are the answers. So, there are other three uh, here other four uh, major components to be discussed. So, we will stop at this uh, inventory management component. We will meet with the uh, next uh, session with the uh, next major component of ER uh, human resource management. Okay, thank you.